This is the first of a couple of examples that we'll do related to the ideal gas law. In this problem, we want to know what the pressure of the system will be if I take 45 grams of oxygen, put it in a 50 milliliter container at 29 degrees Celsius. So one of the challenges of these types of problems is exactly which equation do we need to use? Are we going to use PV equals NRT? Are we going to use one of the simple gas laws? Um, it's a pretty good rule of thumb if nothing is changing, right? So I just want to know what the pressure is, but the temperature is not changing, I'm not changing the volume, uh, I'm not changing the number of moles, then the equation I'm probably going to need to use is just the simple ideal gas law. So PV is equal to NRT. And in this case, they're asking about the pressure. And so if I can find the volume, the moles, and the temperature, then I should be able to find the pressure. So the volume, that's given to us. The moles, they don't give it to us, but they do give us the mass of oxygen. And I can use the molar mass to take the grams into moles. And for the temperature, they've given that to us. So we should be able to solve for the pressure in this case. The only things we need to be careful of when we plug things into the ideal gas law, the volume needs to be in liters, so I'm going to need to convert this milliliters into liters, and the temperature needs to be in Kelvin, so I'll need to convert the 29 degrees Celsius into Kelvin. All right, let's start with the moles. So, I've got 45.0 grams, and I need to divide that by the molar mass. Now remember, oxygen gas is one of those gases that exists in the diatomic form uh, in its elemental form. So it's O2, not O. So the molar mass is 32 grams per one mole. And so I get 1.41 moles. For the volume, I need to convert the milliliters into liters. So I've got 50 milliliters. I know that one milliliter is 10 to the minus three liters. I should put my time symbols in here. Uh, so I'm going to move the decimal place over three spots. So my volume in liters. And then finally the temperature I need to get to Kelvin. So to get to Kelvin, I'll add 273.15. Sorry, 273.15. And the correct number of significant figures, my temperature is 302.2 Kelvin. All right, so now I'm ready to go ahead and plug things into the ideal gas law. I like to rearrange the equation first before I plug the numbers in, so I want to solve for P. So I'll divide both sides by the volume. So the equation that I need to solve is P is equal to NRT over V. So when I go ahead and plug in my numbers now, I've got 1.41 moles. I need to multiply that by R, 0 0.08206. That has units of liters times atmospheres, and then it's divided by mole.kelvin. So I'll need to put the moles and the kelvin in the denominator uh, so that I can check my units properly. Now I multiply by the temperature, so times 302.2 kelvin, and then I need to divide by the volume, so 0 0.0. 500 zero, zero liters. All right, now let's check my units. So I've got a moles in the numerator and the denominator. I've got a Kelvin that will cancel, and I have a liter that will cancel. So I'll be left with atmospheres, which is the units of pressure, so that's good. So my pressure, when I plug all this into my calculator, comes out to be 203 atmospheres. And that's our final answer.